So after 1,000 votes on the poll, Xabi Alonso tactic is finally going to be here. If you guys do enjoy the tactics on this channel, be sure to leave a like, drop a little subscription. But let's get into this right now. This one's going to be a bagger. Hopefully you enjoy. So then guys, let's go over and talk about the first test that is going to be with his current team, Bayer Leverkusen, currently flying in the Bundesliga and we are flying in the save as well. As he managed to win the Bundesliga quite comfortably over RB Leipzig as Bayern dropped to third and Dortmund finish in the last Champions League spot in fourth place. It's going to be Big Patrick coming in with 33 goals, Grimaldo coming in with a 7.53 highest rating, and it is going to be Hoffman coming in with 21 assists. A very good season for this Bayer Leverkusen team. We scored 92 Bundesliga goals, conceded just 20, making it a very, very good season as we rank best in both categories. We also win the pockle against Bayern, making it a double winning season. I guess the only disappointment is going to be the Europa League exit. But to be honest, a first season with Leverkusen with no signings We've got to take it. What a season. We're actually featuring quite a fair few of these league stats. Obviously, these two at the top, we've got to know. These two here, though, 529 shots for, the fewest against at 177. Also, the most dribbles made coming in at 596, alongside of the fewest conceded, and obviously, the most clean sheets coming in at 17. These are the stats we care about, really, the squad stats. We are going to see a nice variety of goal scorers. 33 coming in from Patrick. Florian Wirtz coming in with 25. 12 for Hoffman, taps over from set pieces, coming in with 10, 9 coming in for Xhaka, Tar with 8, Grimaldo with 8 as well. Then there is a little bit of a drop off, but realistically, we have still got loads of players contributing with these goals, which is exactly what I want to see in these tactics. In terms of the assists, it's going to be very good as well. We're looking at 21 from Hoffman, Grimaldo with 16, 11 for Xhaka, Verts coming in with 11, 5 coming in for Piero, Stanisic with 4, Palacios with 4. Loads of players getting involved, that being 4 plus players contributing with 10 plus assists in the season. And goals, to be fair, again, is going to be 4 players with 10 and above. And as long as we're hitting them, I'm more than happy. But now going over to the last real big stat line, the data hub. The most important, really, 2.71 goals a game conceded at just under 0 0.6, 0 0.59 to be exact. Over 15 shots a game, a 91% pass completion. We're going to round up on this occasion. An attacker win ratio coming in at 78. 8.46. What a season with Bayer Leverkusen. Oh, I am sorry to the Real Madrid fans, but we are actually going to test with the team which I can see Xabi Alonso going to one day. That is going to be Real Madrid, and we had a fantastic season over in Spain as we only lose two games in the entire season, picking up 100 exact league points. Absolutely incredible. It's going to be Vinny Jr. coming in with 40 goals, Jude Bellingham coming in with a 7.38 match rating, and it is both going to be joint on assists actually between him and Arda Gula both picking up 17 assists. Of course, Jude is going to be on the front. We love to see that. 97 league goals scored, only 17 conceded, and on this occasion, just the one red card. And actually, the best, picking up the fewest yellow cards. It's also going to be a quadruple winning season. We love to see that as well. The Champions League, successful against RB Leipzig. The Spanish Cup against Atletico Madrid. We love to see that. And of course, lastly, the real fierce derby against Barcelona in the Spanish Super Cup. So a quadruple winning season. Can we complain? No. Looking at some of these stats again, it's going to be exactly the same as it was at Leverkusen. We're going to feature the most shots for at 652. The fewest shots against at 156. Most dribbles made actually outrageous now. 747. Fewest conceded at 17. And the most clean sheets coming in at 24. You can't really hate the tactic. And going over to the data hub, we are going to be looking at 2.55 goals a game. They conceded at 0.45. I will say this right now. This is a very defensively solid tactic. You're not going to score like four or five goals a game, but it is very good at controlling the game, therefore conceding very few goals. It really is good. And we are going to test with an underdog team as well. So don't you worry if you are still watching at this point in the video. We also are going to have a 91% pass completion. And on this occasion, over 17 shots a game. You can already see the comments. Josh doesn't work with an underdog team. Yes, it does. We're actually going to test it in the Japanese league as well, which is a first time for the channel. These are predicted to finish in 17th place. And we have actually come out and won the league, which is absolutely incredible. Also runners up in the League Cup, merely making it a double winning season. You can see as well, we only lost three games and had over 20 point advantage over second place Urara. So do you know what? Overall, a very good season, showcasing how good this tactic actually is, even with the smaller teams. As we pick up 26 goals here, 24 assists, 99 league goals, 19 conceded, 
pretty much dominated the entire division. And again, you can't really hate it. And now in terms of the data hub, we are actually going to approach this free goal mark as well, which is very, very impressive considering they are the weakest team we're going to play with. 2.91 to be exact, 0.56 conceded, just under 17 shots a game, a 91.38% pass completion, and nearly an 80% tackle win ratio. Disciplined, determined, goals... What more do you want? And of course, we're going to have some highlights here. A 7-0 win over Stuttgart in the Bundesliga. Absolutely flying. And you guys can now see where the goals come from in this tactic. What you can expect and how you're going to be playing. As you can see, some very good link-up play getting through the middle there. A little bit lucky with the amount of rebounds we got in that goal. But general build-up in this tactic is really impressive. And of course, as I like to plug constantly, do download my set pieces as well. Because we scored a ton of goals from them as well. Grimaldo plays it inside to Palacios, into Granit Xhaka, ball inside into Tar. Again, always options on each side of the field. Very well balanced the way that the team spreads in this way. Into Stanisic, into Hoffman. Again, a man who can put the ball in the back of the net, as he does there. Utter dominance, and of course, there are more goals to come. One last one here, I believe, maybe two more, as a bit more direct approach there through the middle, from Hoffman into Big Patrick, and... At this point in the game, Stuttgart may as well have went home. They have no chance of surviving, as again, the fullbacks get involved, as they always do in this system, with another dominant goal. Absolutely incredible. Hoffman down the right now into Stanisic. A little bit lucky there with a deflection, but an elegant finish from Palacios, just showcasing the amount of players that are available in that box. I will show you also this game against Bayern Munich to show you that you can beat the real, real powerhouses with the team that you are playing with in your relative league. And we actually scored... Potentially the quickest goal I've scored on FM, as it's going to be Grimaldo absolutely bombing down the left-hand side, and a great finish from Florian Verts inside of 40 seconds. Absolutely incredible scenes there. A great bit of build-up from the back now as taps over, drives it in the middle to Xhaka, and was not expecting that one. Manuel Neuer, hold your head in shame, buddy. What a goal from Granite Xhaka, as that was going to be Hoffman on the right-hand side, a ball inside into Patrick Schlick. Again, not much they can do, but Manuel Neuer... You should be ashamed. So then, guys, it is now going to be time to break down the tactic. This is now the perfect time to leave a like on the video and be sure to subscribe if you do enjoy my content. I also do want to quickly say thank you to all of the new Patreons. We have now hit 400 Patreons on the channel and you guys need to check it out. The link's going to be in the description. And over here, you get over eight perks, including access to all three of these tactics in one simple download. You get early video, early tactic release. You get priority in the requests. You also get one-on-one -on -one tactical help giveaways, and so much more. Honestly, it's a great time. Go and check it out in the description. But let's go over and talk about the default variant first. So we are going to go over the goalkeeper, who is going to simply be on defend. Nice and simple, nothing too expressive there. But these are this is where it gets a little bit interesting because we've got quite a few different roles in this system. And no, it's not just to be different. It's because it works. We're then going to have a wide centre-back on the right who is simply going to be on support. A central defender, again, who is simply going to be on defend. Nice and simple. This is where things slowly start to change. We have a wide centre-back on the left who is going to be on support, but this one is going to be on dribble more. And why that is, is going to make sense very, very shortly. The left back is going to be on support, on tackle harder, and on the right-hand side, a complete wing-back, the only role really for Jeremy Fringpong, cross more often, cross aim centre, dribble more, and tackle harder. Can you notice the difference? If you can't, I'll tell you now. So essentially, this wing back is going to dribble more. He's going to be getting up the field, getting really stuck in, as I want Fringpong to do so. On this side, there's no direct instruction to do that. So therefore, this centre back can dribble more, whereas this one is going to be restricted because this player is going to be dribbling more. Hopefully that makes sense, but there is a lot of logic behind playing this way. In the middle, we're actually going to have a Volante on support, on Tackle Harder and Mark Titer. Now, truthfully, between me and you, Possibly a deep line playmaker would have been a better shout, but really to get the performances out of this team, the Volante pushed it from here to here. A real big change. And next to him is going to be the Regista coming in on support, on Tackle Harder, and also Mark Titer. These two, by the way, form a very good midfield too. Going up the field, we're going to have the advanced playmaker coming in on support, on hold position, and Tackle Harder. And next to him, the AM's going to come in on attack, on dribble more, roam from position, and also tackle harder. So again, we are seeing a little bit more of a restricted side on this occasion. This player is going to hold the position, sort of wait for the link up from this complete wing back, and obviously the Volante to push up. And this player is going to be drifting all in this sort of area here, causing all sorts of issues for the opposition. And to finish off the player instructions, we're going to have an advanced forward on attack, 
on dribble more and my go-to shoot more often now going over to them team instructions so it's going to be based off a clean slate style on the balanced balanced mentality just to clarify that and we're going to go over it right now so we are going to have fairly narrow in the attack and width to clarify that we're going to pass into the space because we're not afraid to go more direct when we need to do so. We've got to focus to play through the middle because obviously a lot of the plays are quite centralized. We're going to play out from the back as well. We saw that a lot in the build up in them highlights. We've got to actually have a shorter passing style alongside a slightly higher tempo. So it's quite an aggressive tactic to play, but not completely maxed out to the top. So you're not going to encounter too many injuries, but just make sure again, as always, rotate, training, rest. Then three principles, you'll be completely fine. We're going to have mixed crosses, hit early crosses, mainly because this really gets the most out of the fullbacks. Obviously, Grimaldo and Fringpong, two fantastic players there, both contributing heavily to the success of this team, and they absolutely cooked. Going over to the in-transition tab, we're actually going to have counter press, counter, and distribute to the centre-backs. Only three selections, and that's because that's all that's needed, so nice and simple. But going over to the out of possession, we're going to have a few changes. We're going to have the high pressing line of engagement alongside of that high defensive line more often on the press. We're going to have a lot of pressure on that goalkeeper, and also we're actually going to step up with the defensive line. So it's a very aggressive way of defending, almost a sweeper style, but it worked really well across all of the saves, so I would heavily recommend you give this guy, just give this tactic a whirl, guys. You will not regret it. And just like the last game, we're going to come out on top as well. Real Madrid versus Barcelona. We beat them 4-0, by the way. Absolute dominance dominance here as we got off to a very lively start there inside of 22 minutes it is going to be the main man Vinny coming in with the goal as Arda Gula floats the ball in the box and what a header that is from Rudiger again the set pieces are absolutely key so be sure to get them downloaded as it is now going to be a ball in the box into Arda Gula a great touch across into Vinny Shock of defending from Kunde. we've got to take it as Vinny gets an absolute gift and the last goal here is going to come in again a set piece dodgy keeper from to Stegen it's a tap-in. We've got to take it. So now we're going to go over the attack and variant. And also on this occasion, I've included an away sort of tactic. So definitely stay around for that because you sort of need all three to work off each other. So this is going to be the attack and variant. As you can see, it's a little bit different. We're going to go through every single role. The goalkeeper remains exactly the same. The wide centre-back the same. Central defender the same. The wide centre-back again remaining the same. But we are going to see a couple of changes. So on the left-hand side, there's a lot more instructions on the wing-back. Cross from deep, cross aim centre, dribble more, run wide, stay wider, and tackle harder. This is literally maxing out that wing back to be as attacking as I can possibly get him. And on the right hand side, we've got the complete wing back still, but he's now going to be on attack, attack, sorry, on these instructions. Cross more often, cross aim centre, dribble more, and also tackle harder. So that back five has gone a lot more back three. Centre backs basically remain the same. The wing backs are going to be heavily pushed up. Now, going through to the midfield, the register remains exactly the same. The volante, however, goes attacking as well. On move into channels, tackle harder, and also mark tighter. The advanced playmaker remains exactly the same on hold position and tackle harder. But on the left-hand side, we're actually going to go with the shadow striker coming in on tackle harder. And to finish it off, it's going to remain the same, the advanced forward. So essentially, this is to be used if you are chasing a game. I wouldn't necessarily say go into a game like this. If you're drawing nil-nil against a relegation team, you need a goal quite quickly. This is going to be your trick. Get it downloaded. Going over to the team instructions, it's going to look somewhat similar, but it is a little bit different, you know? So positive mentality is going to come in, just to clarify that. And there are going to be some changes. On this occasion, the only real change is going to be the addition of be more expressive. We really are trying to get the game moving quickly. Other than that, I didn't tweak anything else because I want the tactic to play somewhat similar to the default because we scored so many goals anyway. Just the little tweaks make the big difference. And speaking of little tweaks, it's going to be the in transition tab as we're going to remain on the counter pressing style we're still going to counter attack but the real change is going to be the goalkeeper in possession where we're now going to distribute the ball quick out of possession it's going to look very similar but we have gone with one more thing and that is going to be get stuck in now you can pick up more bookings this way but it's not all that way it's not all negatives you are going to play a lot more aggressive you're going to fly into challenges and when you are trying to get a goal desperately this is needed and now we're going to cover the away game tactic if you want to say defensive tactic you can but i'm not going to label it as that because it's not all defensive it's more of a, a balanced approach to the game this is what i played going in against the likes of Bayern munich for example until i got a real feeling for that game so we're going to go over the player roles right now the goalkeeper remains as a goalkeeper we actually get rid of the wide center backs because the wing backs aren't going to be as attacking going forward so they're not going to be all the way pushed up meaning that we don't really need our center backs to be acting 
all the way out wide. So they are going to be ball playing defenders on the default on both sides. And we're going to stick with that central defender in the middle. So a very solid back three. The wing back on the left is simply going to be on support on tackle harder. Now, I know it has will get further forwards on, but he's not going to be dribbling more. So he's not going to be as committed as what he would be, for example, in the attacking variant or even the default variant. And on the right hand side, we're going to have exactly the same. Get rid of the complete wing back because we're going to have a lot more of just a structured back sort of three or five. If you want to say that you can look at this from two different sort of point of views in terms of what formation it is. Technically, it is your three, your four, your two, your one. But I can see the comments saying it is a five back. In my opinion, it's not. Two in the middle, we're going to have the register coming in on support. That role remains exactly the same. I've gone with a deep blowing playmaker because we are just trying to get a bit of a foothold in the game. And since we're not going in the game trying to control it as much, we're just trying to sort of psych out the other team. I want to have a player in there that is literally going to pick up the ball and make very progressive passes and try and get an early goal in the game. Try and catch them off guard. And this player does it so well on Tackle Harder and Mark Titer. We're going to have an AM on the left on support on Tackle Harder and an AP on the right, again, simply on Tackle Harder. And to finish it off, remain an unchanged in all three of the variants, the advanced forward on Dribble More and Shoot More Often. And going over to the team instructions, it is now going to go back to Balanced balance to clarify the width is going to go down to narrow basically to compress the team to a more narrow style make it easier to sort of complete them passes essentially and do have levels of possession like i said against the top teams i'm not expecting to dominate possession but setting us up to do that is still a very good idea we're going to pass into space focus to play through the middle while playing out from the back the shorter um, passing directness is going to remain the same alongside of that slightly higher tempo we're going to dribble less meaning that we're not going to be caught out as much making these really progressive runs and really we get a chance to have the ball and dominate the possession hopefully dominate possession like i said we're not gonna not necessarily gonna dominate the top teams like Bayern munich with the ball but just sort of eliminating as many risky options is key in my opinion we're gonna hit early crosses alongside of the mixed cross option in transition it's gonna be pretty much well, it is going to be exactly the same actually as a default instruction so i'm not going to waste your time and out of possession now this is where you guys need to have your influence on it because i personally when i'm playing a top team i like to have a standard line to really get a feel for the game and i you end up not conceding as many early goals this way so i've gone with a standard line the high pressing line of engagement more often prevent and also get stuck in because i want to basically have a tactic which i think i've created really well here which can dominate the ball, can complete lots of easy passes, but also can catch them off guard, getting stuck in, taking the game to them. Deep line playmaker, bang, passing behind. Sometimes you have to hit them with fire, these top teams. You can't just sit back and let them come to you. And that is going to give you boys three variants of the highly requested. Over 1,000 of you guys wanted this tactic. Absolutely nuts, by the way, to see them stat lines. That is going to be delivered to you. The Jabby Alonso 3 4 2 1 by Josh Daly. There we go. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, please do leave a like, drop a little subscription, be sure to turn on notifications, check out my second channel because we're going to have console and mobile tactics on there shortly, so definitely check it out and I'll see you boys in the next video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, here are going to be a couple more videos I'm sure you're going to love. Down here, you're going to see my previous video and here is going to be a video I personally recommend for you guys to check out. Trust me, you're going to love it.